The rider is always right. That's what they say. <laughs> So what's the best part of your job as a pathologist? Uh, how about you? You're the dad, I guess, right? Uh, not his dad, but I am a dad. Okay. <laughs> He's like my future brother-in-law, I guess you could say. Oh. Dad. Is it possible for people to get a stutter or anything like that later in life? Or is it something that you have to be sort of born with? Uh, usually you'd see it if it was serious before. My parents told me I didn't speak until I was four. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gonna fly now, right? Yeah, you got no problem. Can't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> we drive around and talk about business, ideas, and passion. Yeah, what's the company? I don't work, yeah, I have yeah, my company. company. My primary company is called Mad Artist Publishing. Mad Artist? So in the span of like seven months, you went from like no clue to yeah. being really, really good. And they're no longer complaining about it. Uh, they moved out, right? The app actually sent me against traffic on a one-way. Really? But a lot of it is proprietary code, so yeah. you know, we created once and then we kind of sell templates and then skin it. Yeah, yeah. Right. You, know, you could get pretty good at guitar, I'd say, in a thousand hours. Okay. Now I just don't rent to people who are in drama. <laughs> right. Hey, refuel by DigiPow. Portable power on the go. is still not working correctly. I installed it, installed it, and yet I still cannot contact the rider. Yeah. Hey, how's it going guys? Yeah, the app doesn't work, so I sit here waiting for you guys, hoping that you'll call me. Oh yeah? Yeah, because I had some so we're still going to the Air Canada Center? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, before we go, yeah. there's a camera in here. Yeah. So it's for your safety and my safety and because we're doing a pilot for a web series and a television show called Uber Experiment. Oh, cool. So what we do basically is we drive around and talk about business, ideas, and passion. Sounds, Sounds cool? Yeah. All right. What do you think as far as routes right now? Because like, we got what? Oh, shit. Sure. We're, we're on one of those like... Tighter timelines? A little bit tighter timeline, yeah. Do you have any? Uh, well, actually, the GPS gives us the fastest route. Right. So yeah, according to this, cool 23 maps. minutes. So, uh, what's yours say? Same? Yeah. I, I was just gonna check Google Maps, so I'm pretty confident. Yeah, see, yeah, uh, actually, ooh. you know what? Looks like uh, the DVP would be faster than it is. The rider is always right, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually funny because uh, when we're going with the rules, they're like, yeah, okay, you gotta do what they say. Even if the route says it's faster, really? if they wanna go yeah. in another direction. Maybe they want the scenic route. Yeah, let them pay for it. <laughs> Are you uh, from Toronto? Uh, yeah, originally yeah. from here. So. <laughs> no? Yeah. But you're from here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I grew up here. So you work for Uber? No, gosh no. I'm actually part of the experiment. So there's three of us. Yeah. I have a website called Tep Talks, and it stands for Toronto Entrepreneurs in Business. And originally, it started as a review, to review the platform that the Uber provides, because it essentially allows any person to become an entrepreneur. Right. Uh, and what ended up happening is, uh, the first day, which is last Thursday, when I went driving to do the review to see if it was worth it, uh, I found that I kept picking up business people and like really cool people, mm. like really good conversation. Then we contacted some people and they said, okay, let's let's come up with this concept and uh, the Uber experiment was born. Mm. And then we're gonna be putting together a web series, which is gonna start on YouTube. Then we're gonna try and pitch it to as an actual television show. So we're getting GoPro as a sponsor, and eventually we would have swag, but this is like the beginning, so yeah, yeah, we yeah, got yeah. nothing for you guys. That's uh, fine. Yeah. Content first, I guess. Oh, yeah, I guess. That's how it starts. How about you? You're the dad, I guess, right? Um, not his dad, but I am a dad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. No yeah, problem. He's like my future brother-in-law, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very nice. So, what do you do then? That's what I'm a speech pathologist. Tell me more about that. Speech pathology? Yeah. Do well, you work with, uh, I guess, people who have speech impediments? Yep, that's uh, pretty much exactly it. Yeah, kids and adults, and uh, I assess and, and treat people who have difficulty with communication. Is this something you always were, were into? Or? I was actually uh, in music for a long time, and connection I kind of made it while I was studying psychology and uh, cognitive psychology and a chapter on like language in one of my textbooks and read about speech pathology and thought it was pretty cool. So took another course in uh, linguistics and phonetics and applied for the program and got in and that was it. You must have a very good ear for sound and, and, and everything, right? Yeah, well that's kind of how I got interested because I, I found that the the listening part of it I was already quite good at because I trained my ear you know, from childhood with piano and all that stuff. So.
Would yeah. you would you say people who have a keen ear for sound are able to just pick up instruments like that? Uh, yeah, I, I, it doesn't always correlate to technical proficiency, but yeah. some people... I tried playing the guitar once, I, 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 I picked it up, I was like, no, I'm not dexterous enough. I was like, maybe if when I'm 70 years old and I have time on my hands, <laughs> I'll learn it, but I'm not patient enough to just, you know, do all this stuff. A lot of repetition, you know, and some people do have that kind of ear part, so it, it's a little easier than to just kind of sit down and, like, figure out a song. I'm very in awe of people who can just sit there and listen to something and then they can just play it yeah. whether it's a piano or it's a guitar or anything it's, yeah. it's pretty mind-blowing actually yeah usually you know people like that have had some kind of training to begin with when they're kids I do real estate investing and I rent to students last year there was a guy who would uh, he bought a guitar he had absolutely no clue how to play it and then the people upstairs always complain that you know he's learning at night and whatnot <laughs> And then I remember, you know, I came in, you know, like once or twice and I actually heard him play and he was crappy. And then towards the end, like they actually said he plays really, really well. So in the span of like seven months, he went from like n no clue to yeah. being really, really good. And they're no longer complaining about him playing. Well, he, they moved out, right? Oh, okay. Obviously. No, I couldn't, I couldn't ask him to leave, right? Yeah. But now I just don't rent to people who are in drama. <laughs> right. It's possible, I, I would say. Um the average person could probably teach themselves to play guitar in a couple of months like that. But the difference between, you know, really, really great, as in with most things, you need to put in a couple thousand hours. Well, Ooh, a thousand? A, uh, ten thousand? Ten thousand? Gladwell's theory. The, yeah, yeah. Whoa. For mastery. Yeah. It's ten thousand? Ten thousand hours. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that also with the habits? Because, you know, how to change a habit. I don't think it's ten thousand hours. Oh, no, though. no. With that, I think they say twenty-one days yeah. to, to change into a new habit. but. How many hours you work on that within the day? I guess that changes. Yeah. But for new skills, like you know, you could get pretty good at guitar. I'd say at a thousand hours. Okay. Um, so what's the best part of your job as a pathologist? Uh, sorry, what is it called? Uh, speech pathologist. Speech pathology. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple terms people use: speech therapist, speech language pathologist, speech pathologist. So it gets a little confusing. Best part would probably be. Um, wish I had an experience today where I just connected with a client really fast and, and got them uh, on the right track with a problem they'd had for quite some time and uh, you don't always get to have that experience so sometimes it can be a pretty tough slog for people. Is it uh, a lot of people who have problems stuttering? Yeah, stuttering. Uh, you also see a lot of uh, delays in speech and language. So, Is it possible for people to get a stutter or anything like that later in life or is it something that you have to be sort of born with? Uh, usually you'd see it if it was serious before uh, sort of like young adulthood and if it happens while it's in childhood and you still have it going into sort of you know your teenage years mm -hmm. there's a good chance that you'll have it for the rest of your life. I have, I have a nephew and he's uh, two and a half and my sister-in-law is just crazy worried that because he's still not speaking any words really yeah. you know circle and mom and there are very few words and she's yeah. very worried yeah. that he's behind. I mean, I don't know if he's behind or not. My parents told me I didn't speak till I was four. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna fight now, right? Yeah, you got no problem. Can't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're concerned. You well, know, what do you like, think is a concern? Like, how? What are sim symptoms? I guess of a, of a kid. It's they're, they're the complexity, like the. He seems like a very happy, normal kid. I mean, he is. Yeah. It just he articulates himself in, in childlike ways, like toddlers would, right? Yeah. Screaming and screeching and whatever. Yeah. But he doesn't really. age, you know, they yeah. expect certain things of kids at different ages. And yeah. They conduct these studies where they look at averages. So, for example, they'd say, you know, over a thousand two-year-olds, these are the kinds of things we'd expect them to be able to say. You know. Oh. And, and they measure things like uh, how many words do they have in their vocabulary. Of instruction or direction that they can uh, act on and receive and, and comprehend. So, so about you, Constantine. So, what, what's your passion, or what do you want to be doing if you're not doing it yet? I'm uh, a designer. Oh, like a what kind of designer. UI designer. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I totally know your language. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, do you work uh, someone in that? Uh, well, I actually originally went from graphic design to York. Oh. Okay. I self-taught myself web design. Then I started a freelance agency and that sort of propelled itself its own thing so I, yeah, I, I yeah. do UI but I have a team of developers and art directors that work with me to create my vision I tried learning uh, recently uh, Ruby on Rails yeah. and it's just like no man like it's a completely different mindset yeah, to, what's to do. The, what company do you work for? I don't do you, work yeah, I have yeah, my company. company 
Uh, my company, my primary company is called Mad Artist Publishing. Mad Artist? Yeah, Mad Artist Publishing. And that we create uh, digital content and educational content for artists. Cool. So we publish like 50 books in three years. And, yeah. and then that with that comes a lot of like clients that do, they require uh, web design. Extra stuff, yeah. And yeah, and I have a software ready. team. Yeah, so like uh, launch a site called Sketchaholic, Schoolism. Aero Cinema, Cache Metals. Uh, we just did an educational platform for a school in LA called Retouching Academy. Uh, it's uh, it's like an online school for photographers. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, um, but a lot of it is proprietary code. So you yeah. know, we created once, and then we kind of sell templates and just skin it. Yeah. 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 Right. Can I pull a Yui here? According to this, I can. All right. Well. Same, no. Uber, <laughs> yeah. you know Uber. The app actually sent me against traffic on a one way. Oh, really? Yeah, the first day that I was using this. So now you're using Google Maps instead. Yeah. 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 Safe. Safe. Yeah. The thing kept crashing, and and you know I just followed the line. Yeah. So. So uh, so wh where are you working? Are you freelancing then? No, or? I work with an agency in uh, that's based in Victoria, BC. They what do like there? big. I work in apps and stuff. Too. Okay. Yeah, apps is something that I totally yeah. want to get into. I have no idea how this whole viral thing works yet. <laughs> like, I've tried. We've had a Kickstarter campaign and we made money for for one of the books, but I have no idea how things go viral. Great. It's just one thing I haven't f figured out. Yeah, what do you think? A lot of yeah. some massive amounts of like effort, money, Which one like one quick time. Set it up right. Uh, I can let you out. Yeah, yeah, anywhere. Actually, fine. yeah, there it is. Okay, well, thanks for the right, guys. Yeah, good luck, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I catch my breath for a second there. <laughs> right on. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I love it. I've had a musician. I've had a Phonetic instructor, is that the proper way? Of yeah. Sorry, would you say musician? You do that for a living? Yep. You know, I wrote the theme song to the Big Bang Theory. All started with the Big Bang. Like, are you in a band? You... Yes, I'm in a band. Okay. We're called Bare Naked Ladies. Oh my god! The only thing I know how to play is flute. And that's great in high school. Play. Ron Burgundy's a flautist, man. From uh, Anchorman. He's a, he plays he's jazz good. flute. Oh, he does. Doesn't get more belly than uh, Rod. Taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody say one billion. <laughs> I can tell you though, I've taken a group this small and changed it into convention centers of 15, 20,000. You know, it's not how you get involved in the industry, it's who you get involved with. 